Conquer Final Conquest is a turn-based game. When you first start your turn, you flip the timer and you have exactly one minute to do four things. The first thing you do is earn your car currency. So if you are Carthage, you'll notice that you control Numidia and Carthage, and that equates to two gold coins that are under your possession, and thus you earn two gold coins at the beginning of the round. Next, you recruit your troops. So for every large castle that you control, you can recruit one cavalry unit, which has a strength of two, or two infantry units, each with a strength of one. In this case, I'm choosing one cavalry unit. If you have a small fort under your control, such as Thebes, you can recruit one infantry unit only. Just a point, when you recruit uh, something, you have to place it in the territory that you've recruited from. I can't place this horse here if I've recruited it. I have to place it here and then I can move it. Uh, keep in mind when you're recruiting troops, you have to abide by your food supply. So in this game, you have to feed your armies. Uh, Carthage currently only has one food supply, if you notice. And that's as such, if you look at the food supply matrix, that means that with one food supply, you can only have six units on the map at any uh, point uh, in time. And as such, by the time I have six units on the board, I cannot recruit any more units until I'm able to, uh, to capture more territories with food supply. So for example, if I move the soldier here, now I have two food supplies, which means that I can have eight units according to the food supply matrix. The third thing, is you have the choice of recruiting a hero. Remember, these are the superpowers of this game and their price is on the cover of the card. The final step is to move one of your units. And once you do so, the timer stops. It's no longer relevant. You can take your time uh, planning your next move. The timer stops. But in, more importantly, once you've moved that unit, you can no longer recruit, you can no longer uh, get your money, you can no longer buy your hero card. So if you forgot to do so before you've moved, tough luck. So what happens if Carthage hasn't moved yet and the timer has run out? Well, any other player can bribe Carthage's armies as long as the army doesn't reside in Carthage's capital. In, in this example, I can uh, bribe the army in Numidia and because he's one soldier, it takes one golden coin to bribe that soldier. And what that means is I can actually take over that territory and replace that soldier with my own soldier. Now I have to, the, the, the value of the bribe is equivalent to the strength of the unit and you have to do it before Carthage moves. So in this example, even if the timer runs out, if I haven't given the gold coin to the bank yet and Carthage has moved, then I cannot bribe Carthage anymore. You have to bribe before Carthage moves, even if the timer has run out. Now, once you've moved one of your units and the timer has ended, um, you can move any single unit once in, in that turn. That means that I've already used this unit and I will turn it over to indicate that it's exhausted this turn. Um, I can still move those two units during my turn. Um, and the way you move a unit is moving it to any adjacent territory. So I can do this, I can do that, I can do this, or I can even go into the sea. Uh, but once I do so in any of these moves, they can no longer move that turn and they can start moving the, the turn after that. You can move into any of your territories or in an empty territory, but if the territory is occupied by another player, whether it's at sea or at land, then you can no longer go into it without waging war against that player. So in order for me to move to Cyrene, I would need to attack the Yellow Army, Egypt, and I need to beat it in order to take over that territory and place it there. No two armies can share the same territory. So what happens when Carthage attacks Egypt? First, you count the strength of each side's army. In this case, Carthage has a strength of four, since it has two cavalry units, and Egypt has also a strength of four. Next, you give the defender a defensive bonus. A defender always gets a defensive bonus of one. If they are defending a large fort, let's say uh, Gaul in this case, or the Alps, then they get a defensive bonus of two. 
And finally, if Egypt was attacking Carthage, let's say, and Carthage was defending its capital, a capital gets a defensive bonus of four. Next, the attacker decides whether they want to play a hero card or not. Uh, if they want to, they just put it face down. Remember, you can only use a hero card if you've purchased this already. Uh, and then the defender can choose to match that and, and play one or more than one hero card uh, in this battle. Uh, let's assume in this case that no hero cards are played. It's right now four against five, which is an army of four plus a defensive bonus of one, which is five. Finally, each army uh, rolls a dice, and the result of that dice roll is added to the army strength. So in this case, Carthage has an army strength of four plus three, that's seven. Uh, Egypt has a strength of five, which is a defensive bonus to the army. Plus one, it's six. That means Carthage wins seven to six. So what happens if hero cards actually are played? As I said, they are the super weapons of this game. When a hero card is played during battle, the strength in the top right corner, which says plus two, is added to the army strength. So in this case, if Carthage played this card, their army strength would be nine, which is seven plus two is nine, plus any special abilities specified in this card. In this card, it's irrelevant. It's gained two strength while fighting a sea battle, and this is not a sea battle. But if it was a sea battle, you'd add another two, which makes you uh, your army a strength of 11. Okay, so if there are three battle outcomes. If there's a draw, um, then what happens is nothing happens. No army is lost. However, the attacking army exhausts this turn and can no longer attack this turn. If the defender wins, then the attacker loses as many units as they've lost by in terms of the margin. So if, for example, the attacker, the defender scored nine and the attacker scored seven, they would lose one horse, which has a strength of two, which is the difference between the battle strength. If the attacker wins, a lot of things happen. So number one, um, there are casualties on the defense uh, side. Um, let's say in this case, the casualty, since the difference is two, uh, the, since the difference is one, the casualty is one horse, because you can't split up a horse into two soldiers, so the entire horse dies. Uh, the other thing is, the Carthaginians take over this territory, and this horse needs to retreat. He can't retreat into the sea. And right now, the only place he can retreat to is Libya. The third thing is the Carthaginians gained one gold coin for winning uh, a battle for if you attack and you win, you win a one gold coin. Uh, and then finally, and the most important rule in battle uh, games is they, don't, they haven't exhausted their turns yet. Because they won an attacking battle, they can actually attack one more time this round. So they can uh, technically, if they would like to, attack Libya again and take that territory uh, from Egypt if they are victorious. So when you attack a white army, let's say Rome wants to attack this army right here in the Alps, which is an independent army, it's an independent nation. Uh, the way to defeat it is to be stronger than it. That's all, you don't have to roll the dice. In this case, the army has a horse and a soldier, which has a strength of uh, three, plus a defensive bonus from the big castle of two. So their, their strength is five. So you are not able to attack it with two horses. You have to have at least three horses or more, uh, and a soldier, anything with a strength of six and above, to be able to capture the Alps. A few house cleaning notes. The Danube River actually connects Thracia, uh, the Black Sea, and Celtica together. Um, so you can actually move a unit from Celtica to Thracia in one turn or to the Black Sea. In case you haven't noticed, these are bridges. So they connect islands uh, together. Don't forget to pull a Chronicle card starting round two, the first person to start the round. And the events uh, unfolding in the Chronicle card uh, apply to everybody. 